right guys, quick edit here. Um, lost the tail end of the video, so I'm tossing this in the front. So, quick announcement. The videos, obviously they've been on, my, on our YouTube and on our blog post over at thehalfwayhomestead.com um, and on our Facebook page. But we are also gonna start ripping the audio out and we've already started and putting them straight up to a podcast. Um, so for those of you that like the audio only format, um, we're cleaning them up a little bit, taking some of the noise reduction and stuff and trying to make them sound a little better because of the truck. Uh, but that's good news. You'll find um, we're working on getting the iTunes and Android platforms, you know, getting up there for those different apps and so forth where you can find us. Um, but in the meantime, you can find the audio on our blog. Um, there will be a player built in, and you can also find uh, it on our Facebook and a link below on YouTube. So thanks so much for, for that. Uh, if you like the audio only, you know, send us a message, let us know. We'd, uh, we'd love the feedback. What's up, homesteaders? Welcome to the Halfway Homestead. I am Len. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about, uh, this is, it is Thursday, September 21st, I believe. And we, uh, I always say, act like I'm not sure about what the date is because I'm not, I, nothing in what I do for a living requires me to know the date of the month. So it's just not there. Anyways, this is uh, episode three of the now daily-ish, semi-daily-ish video series thing on homesteading, gardening, permaculture, self-sufficiency, and um, critical thinking. So today we are going to cover uh, just some really kind of basic history and um, definitions of what is homesteading. Um, I, I think that the folks I've talked to over the last two and a half years since we decided we were going to kind of go down this path, um, universally, they all have very, very similar reactions. And that is they picture homesteading with, you know, the, 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 the mom in the family is got the long cotton dress and the bonnet and she's churning butter and you know and and, and like scrubbing wood floors with like a, a a sheep wool whatever I don't even know the 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 the, the husband is out there with like a, a two-man saw and he's got little Billy on the other end and he's he's teaching him to do that and you know they're they're uh, trapping all their food with you know wired traps and so forth. It's crazy, right? It's like this this is what they imagine, but for good reason. It sounds crazy to me, but there's a good reason for that. So our generation really doesn't know what modern day homesteading looks like. Um, the vast majority of them, obviously there are some, but vast majority don't really know. What they do know is what they've seen in history books and what they've seen on TV and movies. Okay, And what that largely is, is from a time past, like I kind of just described. The settlement of America as we were moving across to the, uh, from, you know, from the east where we, we had the colonies established and into the west and we were trying to figure out how to survive in this, this new land and and so forth. And so I kind of want to start there a little bit. Um, I'm not real good with time and dates. My wife will tell that to anybody who, who, you know, whenever we're in a conversation, I'm like, yeah, three weeks ago. And she's like, no, that was four months ago. So bear with me there. But in that time frame, I'm talking about the settling of America as we were pushing west. When the west first opened up, the very like the, the initial folks that went literally brought everything they owned into their wagon. Every single thing that they owned that had value, they left nothing to include their house. A lot of them would take and dismantle their house as best they could 
to take lumber with them if they could, if they had the means for the wagons. If they didn't, they'd burn their house to the ground where they were living at, burn it, now they wouldn't sell it, they'd burn it to the ground and sift through the ashes to get the nails out because the nails were that important and they knew where they were going, they were gonna need iron and they were gonna need nails. So these folks literally packed up everything they owned, they put it in their wagons and off they went. And so that's kind of like where the image is now when people talk about, oh, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Well, we're, we're working towards being full-time homesteaders. And they, they just, their, their heads spin around and um, they have images of, you know, like uh, green acres um, without, the, without the TV cameras. And while there are some similarities, it's not really like that. So in comparison to that time frame and that movement, you know, where you're packing up everything you own and you're, you're, you're literally going to some unknown place to figure out and hope that there's, I don't know, trees that you can chop down and then, you know, try to build some sort of a structure out of. But, oh wait, you probably have to mill that lumber and let it dry for a season before it's really usable. Hope you brought some warm clothes. Like, none of, that, none of that's today. There's not any place left in America that I'm aware of where you can still just go and put a stake in the ground and go, it's mine. Like, that doesn't happen that way. So, realistically speaking, now we're in a position where what does homesteading look like? Um, I think a lot of it has to do more with what we like to call skilling up. Okay, so we realized that we didn't have a lot of skills on how to manage the things that work and operate in our homes and in our lives. Um, we weren't great cooks. We didn't understand how to preserve food. We know that canning exists, right? You can go to the store and buy a can of beans. All of you have done that. And you put it on a shelf and it gets pushed to the back because you know, like you get some good stuff in front of it and you forget those beans. Don't eat beans. I don't know why people eat beans. Stop doing that. So the beans get pushed all the way to the back and you, you, you dust them off, you know, three years later and you know, you, you got the, the, the one kid in the family that will eat anything just because he wants to prove that he, you know, that he, that he's tough or whatever. And he opens it up and it's fine. So we know canning exists as a society, we get that. But what we don't know is how to do it. Um, we've gotten away from that. That used to be like every day, that the, the, you know, the everyday family, part of their season was to can and preserve their own food for the off season. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Um, we're doing it today in modern day America, we're just paying someone else to do it for us. You know, and as an aside, we're getting an inferior product at the same time. So canning is something like that. So food preservation, we didn't understand that. We didn't, uh, general carpentry skills. You know, there wasn't a lot of need for that growing up in an apartment. You know, um, something broke, we called a guy and we hoped they show up to fix it. They didn't always but that was their job. And you know, <clears throat> so general carpentry skills, general electric skills, how do you rewire an outlet? You know, because I should just know how to do those things. Um, how do you break down a chicken, right? So you go to the store today and you can still buy whole chickens, you know, they're all gutted and everything, they look pretty, but how do you break it down into breasts, wings, thighs, legs, you know, how do you break that down? We didn't know. As crazy as it sounds, because if you're watching this, I'm hoping that, you know, I think the majority of you probably have done some of these things in your life. Um, how you grow a tomato? 
Like, what does that look like? What does it need? Why does it need a cage? Or does it need a cage? Right? The box stores will tell you they need a cage. So, the... We didn't have any of these skills. And so a lot of what homesteading used to be and still is today, it's just being skillful. It's understanding your environment. It's, it's understanding that um, the, the, the immediate world around you that you have impact and influence on. How does it operate? How do you need to, you know, what, how do you need to function within it? And how do you use it to maximize, you know, the, the, the rewards from it, right? And so, now some of you are, will be saying, look, you know, I, I've worked my tail off and I've done all this growth in my, my business or in my, my personal life or in my collegiate life and I make enough money now that I, I don't need to can my own food. I would rather go skiing. Cool, go skiing. It sounds awesome. I've never done it. it. Sounds pretty cool. Go for it. And then come home and can something. There's never, like, there's never time, like, you can't ever say, I didn't have time to learn how to can. And you could say, well, I'm never gonna use that skill. I hear that a lot too. When am I ever gonna learn or need to know how to break down a chicken? And my response is, every time you buy a chicken. Because if you buy a chicken whole, whether it's from us, because we sell pasture-raised, non-GMO chickens, or from somebody else, it's cheaper to buy the whole chicken than it is to buy it partnered out. So buy a whole chicken, watch a three-minute YouTube video, and figure out how to, how to part it out. In fact, you could probably watch our three-minute YouTube video on how to part it out. Pretty sure I have that one posted already. Have to check on that. So, all these little skills like this, these are things that add value to your life. I'll give you another good example. A funny people love to talk, you know, like, all right, well, how does this make you know make my life better in terms of you know money? Because money drives everybody, right? So from a home, you know, using that homesteading mindset where you have skills and you can do things that you normal society today pays someone else to do. We like pork chops. We like roasts, pigs, especially is what I'm talking about here. Um, boneless pork chops, bone in pork chops. If, if, if you can slap it on a grill uh, and, and it, had four legs and oinked. I'm all in, right? So we were buying this stuff, you know, from one of the larger wholesale, wholesale uh, you know, club stores. And because that was the cheapest deal around, you buy it in bulk. And we're sitting there one day and, and I'm looking and they've got this big giant, I mean, it's massive. It's like a femur. It's huge. It's like a whole thigh. And it, it's something like a dollar sixteen or something a pound. It's so cheap, you know. And so I, I'm all in at like fifteen dollars. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't know anything about animals. At this time, I didn't know how what animal parts make what when I buy it in the store. But it looked like it was basically just a whole bunch of pork chops that hadn't been cut. So behind the glass, they got all the guys back there with the saws and they're butchering stuff and they're, you know, so, and I asked the guy, I said, is this what you're cutting up right now in the pork chops? And he says, yeah. And I'm like, and this is what you cut into those roasts? Yeah. Huh. So the pork chops were like three and a half bucks a pound. But I can just, and I can just buy it and cut it myself for $1.16 a pound. I mean, do the math. We stopped We stopped buying. We grow our own pigs now. We already sold out this year. If you want 
get in on some some hogs next year let us know uh, but then we stopped buying individually packaged pork chops and roasts bought the whole thing go home in 15 minutes we've got it cut up and freezer packed toss it in the freezer that one skill alone understanding the parts that break down and asking questions has saved us so much money for like the next year until we started to learn how to do that stuff for ourselves and, and grow the you know raise our own animals so understanding where this stuff comes from this is this is what homesteading is it's modern day homesteading it's what can you do for yourself that will give you more self-sufficiency some more self-reliance okay you're never going to be self-sufficient but you can be more self-reliant so modern day homesteading learn some skills i personally try to learn a new skill every month doesn't always happen sometimes you get bogged down spring and summer are super busy for us uh winter time i tend to to, to learn more and, and and hit more books and listen to more books and so forth but i really think that skilling up finding something new every month um here's a simple idea learn how to tie some knots i know it sounds crazy what do i even need knots for trust me when i tell you there are five or six different basic knots that once you know them you'll be surprised how often you're like oh i can tie this down oh i can um hang this thing in the, uh, you know in my basement to get it up off the floor now that i know how to tie a knot that is appropriate for the purpose they're not hard it just takes a little bit of time turn off the television read a book watch some youtube videos learn how to tie some knots um let's see what other silly ones are they i mean just just silly stuff that you don't realize oh here's one for all you grown men out there Yes, yes, I'm gonna say that. And then I'm gonna say that my wife also does it and she's now un doesn't understand how she ever got by without it. Um, if you don't carry a knife with you everywhere you go, you're doing life wrong. Stop that. You need a knife. My oldest kid for years could not get him to carry a knife. I finally went and bought him a knife and said, carry the stupid knife. Here we are now, probably a year and a half later, and at least every two to three times that we talk to each other, he talks about how that knife came in handy, and he didn't, he never even thought about it. He's like, now I just expect it to be there. I always have a knife, I, and it, it, you know, and he used to give me, when am I gonna just start cutting things? You'd be surprised, they used to do all kinds of stuff. Open the mail, open a box, cut, the, cut an edge off of a box, cut a piece of rope cut my food yeah i'll use the same knife that i use to cut stuff on the farm with my you know to, to cut my food if i'm in a pinch whatever i'm building immunity so you know little tiny things like that these are all like aspects of what modern day homesteading is planting a little bit of your own food knowing how to preserve it how to prepare it understanding how to take and um break down certain parts of an animal to financially be more responsible to yourself and to quite honestly to the industry um we need less big giant machines that rip apart animals um the the idea of that we used to have a butcher a local butcher that serviced the community is is becoming lost and it's uh it's a skill set we def def desperately need to have um still around so that's my thoughts for today. That's a little bit about homesteading, modern homesteading, and, and versus the, the historical. Um, it's not, you know, grandma out there, you know, washing her clothes on a, a, a you know, a steel ribbed washing machine. I don't even know what that, that thing's called, you know, because it's not relevant. Now, can you homestead today that doing those things? Sure, you can. And, I, and those people are awesome. Uh, the, their, their work ethic is second to none. Uh, I don't care how hard you think you work, those people work harder than you. And their great granny, who's like 98 years old, works harder than you. And she's probably got a better, better bill of health. So 
that's my thoughts for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. As always, hit subscribe. Sub oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh, man. I got to find a way to edit this in the front, maybe. All these videos, we're ripping the audio out and we're putting them up on a podcast. We've got the, the hosting done for it already. We're working on getting it to iTunes and, and uh, the Android platforms. But for now, you can find them in the blog post. There's a player, included, including a download button. You can find them on our, um, uh, same thing on our Facebook as well. And, um, oh, on the blog, thehalfwayhomestead.com. Come by and see us. Um, and if there's anything there that, uh, or is that, if you're interested at all in supporting what we do, um, even just a, uh, a, a few pennies, whatever you want to do, amazon.com affiliate link is below. 